Okay, so welcome. Um, thanks for coming, everyone. So Carrie Legault is here, and she is going to be talking to us about finding your dream team and how to attract coaches that you know really want to be workers. She is a three-time elite coach, a success club legend times two with 48 plus months in success club, a two-time summit presenter, a two-time national wake-up call speaker. Um, she was second place in the Beachbody Classic, which is the fitness competition they do at Summit every year, which is super cool. Sometimes she posts pictures from it, and I'm always like, wow. Um, she's a mom of two, soon to be three. She's due, like, tomorrow, I think. I don't even know. She's due, like, really soon. Um, she's a wife, married for almost 12 years, a former middle school math teacher, um, and I believe she's retired her husband also, but she can let us know that. You can take yourself off mute. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm going to mute everyone else. So Carrie, I will let you take it away. Thanks for coming. Okay. I'm so excited to talk to you guys about this. Um, this is something that I'm very passionate about. It was one of, similar to one of the topics I spoke on at Summit. Uh, Megan and I got the opportunity to speak together this past summit and it was incredible to stand there next to you know my success partner but what has become one of my best friends and um, and if you don't have a success partner or push partner I highly recommend it um, if you're in a relationship <laughs> that isn't working so well I highly recommend dating some other people to find a good fit um, and that's why I'm excited to talk to you guys about this because I know it's something that's worked for not only myself, but also Megan and our entire team. And it's something that we um, continue to work on. So it's not going to be identical to what we talked about at Summit because it's almost a year later and things have changed. But I want to hit the key areas and keep this very informal. If you guys want to um, ask a question, you know, just throw it in the chat or even just unmute yourself. I'm a very laid back person and um, I don't sweat any of the small stuff. So I just want you guys to have a great experience. So first off, um, basically we're going to talk about recruiting, which was a really ugly word to me when I first started coaching. Uh, because I came from a middle school math background. My mother was a teacher for 35 years. My dad was a firefighter. Um, you didn't talk really about money or stuff like that. And you didn't talk about, um, you know, being salesy or anything. Like I didn't grow up in that atmosphere of how to recruit or how to, um, you know, essentially put myself out there to be in a position to attract people that, um, I needed to in order to grow a tribe. I was, um, you know, extremely dedicated to being a teacher and enjoyed being in the classroom and, you know, molding and shaping these little lives. But when I jumped into coaching, uh, I, I quickly realized that in order to be a successful coach, um, but in order to really change more lives, I needed to have people working with me. Um, I had an aha moment at a Super Saturday, and I really suggest get into those. Um, they're, I, I swear they're a vital behavior. They should be um, getting to events. And um, at a certain Super Saturday, I was listening to a coach talk, and you know, just my middle school math brain was like, aha, when he said, you know, I can work on, um, I can work on my business five hours, a week because he had a full-time job and whatnot and then um, he goes but the neat thing about this is if I have two friends each working on their business within my team then essentially I'm working on my business 15 hours a week so I was like whoa wait a minute what just happened there and then I could understand the importance of attracting people to your community not just you know that 25% commission which is incredible but that um, the opportunity to take advantage of the other side of the compensation plan was something that really intrigued me. So, you know, how do we, how do we do this in a very natural and a very, um, non salesy, um, kind of way, uh, simply it's our basically onboarding process, but we, we, um, make sure that we're doing it, um, in a way that can be duplicated within our team. So in our first step of, 
um, you know, upgrading our customers to coaches, uh, we offer free challenge groups. Um, we offer um, Shakeology groups. Jillian, do you guys do Shakeology challenges as a team? Yeah, yeah. We, we have a, so like the first Monday of every month, we run a free challenge in our free group. Mm -hmm. so that's the Walk and Water Challenge. And we also, oh. we offer every single time, we offer it with or without a Shakeology jumpstart. Okay, cool. That's, yeah. that's great. Um, so we're kind of similar there. Uh, a lot of times when coaches are getting started, they're more comfortable jumping into the free challenge group or starting running one of those because you don't ever have to deal with a money objection. And I feel like money objections come when you're first starting out coaching because your clients, friends, family still have unanswered questions. And they don't yet see the value in it. So it's kind of like a safe place to start. Um, the next step would be the Shakeology groups, which our team usually does five day um, sometimes 10 days and then uh we have our fitness challenge groups which are the paid challenge pack challenge groups and i'm sure you guys have all that um so what we do in these groups is really we focus on um empowering different personalities within the group so i do have a little bit of a group fitness background so i can i can relate it to that i can also relate it to my middle school classroom you know like that that girl in the front row that has all the answers to everything or um, the front row diva that knows the moves before the instructor and drives the instructors nuts or um, even that person that's just working hard in that middle of that class you know whether it's in a classroom or group fitness or in your challenge groups you know they're just they're doing the things they're they're logging their Shakeology, they're doing their workouts, maybe they're chiming in here and there. Um, and then you have, you know, the wallflowers, or the kid that comes into class first but wants that back row seat, that's why he's there first. Or, you know, the, the person that comes in the last minute of class every single time, so it's really her only spot is in that back row. That's, we're looking for those different types of personalities and reaching out to them in those different types of, of gems, if you will. Um, some of you guys might be familiar with the emerald, ruby, pearl, um, sapphire. Have you guys done that, Jillian, as a team? No? no. Okay, so maybe, maybe some of you have. And then there's also the color personality test, which I'm not as familiar with. But basically, in a nutshell, the emerald is the person that is, um, you know, usually science, math minded, organized, labels everything. Um, the sapphire person is the person that's just there to have fun and, you know, talking most of the class or, you know, that kind of thing. The ruby is the competitive person. Like, I'm going to get the best workout in here. Or I'm going to get the best test grade and I'm not going to be happy until I do so. That kind of person. And then the pearl is just like, let's all just sing kumbaya together and love on each other. So these are all like the different personalities that we're talking to. So we're not delivering the same message when we reach out um, individually to the people in our free groups, in our Shakeology groups, in our challenge groups, or we're not posting with that same tone in, in our groups. We're trying to hit all of our, our different personalities within the group, even when we're posting right on those feeds. Um, so it gives different people different times to chime in and different times to feel really at home, um, feel like it's a safe learning environment, that kind of thing. Um, so that's what we kind of do on the surface uh, when we're looking for different personalities and who's going to jive with who kind of thing. Um, but also, we're being very mindful of using those personalities to know that um, there are people out there that are gonna relate to those four different people. Um, and then sometimes people might be a little strange, like me, <laughs> where they test 25% in all the categories, so I'm just kind of like an enigma, or I fit in, I try to fit in anywhere kind of thing. Um, what we're doing is we're trying to identify like those potential coaches. And what we do is when we see someone post or see someone comment or see someone um, maybe step out of their comfort zone a little bit, whether it's in the group or on social media, uh, we'll reach out personally and we'll say, hey, you know, like it's just something simple. Like um, I know Jillian has a cute little formula where she does, um, what is it? compliment, comment, and a question. Is that your three that you usually use. I think that's perfect because that's how it usually goes. Like, hey, I saw how great your, you know, 
your transformation was or how awesome your non-scale victories that you shared were. Um, I know it was so scary the first time I shared, shared mine. Have you ever thought about doing what I'm doing? And it just starts a conversation. Like that's how it would happen in a face-to-face -face conversation. You know, like meeting a stranger, you give them a compliment on what they're wearing or whatnot. You relate it to yourself somehow. And then you ask a question, usually where they got them or whatever. Um, so just keeping it super casual, but we're going to be reaching out mindfully about how they, like how they present themselves, if you will. Um, and it's not something that you need to overthink. It's something just that's natural. Like they're already identifying themselves in their certain gem mold, if you will. So it's just commenting or complimenting what they've, they've shared and just keeping it really personal. So that's how we use the groups to um, identify the people that we want on our teams and and be selective you know it's not for everybody and you don't have to invite everybody um, to your team um, you know invite people that lift you up empower you and that kind of stuff uh, and then also you know don't obviously negate anybody that doesn't fit your style because I know myself um, who I was when I first started coaching is not who I am today and personal development has greatly helped me transform into um, you know someone that I think is a lot better off and at least moving closer to the goals that I set kind of thing um, and then we do something similar uh, Jillian do you guys recruit as a team do you do like blitz and sneak peek all together or are those up to the individual coaches yeah, so I have team, I have a free team group, a, I'll call it paid, but you know, for people that purchase something, you don't pay to get in. And then mm -hmm. we actually did our sneak peek this week. So we do a sneak peek for three days. And then within those three days, I always host a live call also, usually with one other coach from the team who has said they want to really recruit heavily so that they can have the opportunity to host that. Oh, all right. That's awesome. Um, I like that. And that's so cool that you have people on your team stepping up to lead that with you because I think that's where you grow the most. Honestly, I think, <laughs> I think one of the things that works so well for Megan and I together is we are definitely not afraid to fail. <laughs> We're like, yeah, let's try that. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> so we, um, we do things all the time. Um, one thing that worked really well for us when we first started doing it, and I don't know if it's just it wears itself out over time, but we did what we call a blitz. Um, basically, it's a uh, one hour time slot event that's live. Um, and we put everybody in a private group for it. Um, I know some people do them on event pages and it's nice because they stay in the order that you post, but often sometimes people can see it that it wasn't meant for or people are less likely to share so we like to do it in that private group setting still on Facebook um, and essentially in the blitz it's a, a one hour um, share all the awesome stuff about Beachbody all the coaches work together and chime in and everybody is there to build energy and support and um, the you know like we get the people in the group um that day the latest and it usually is at 9 p.m so 9 to 10 um eastern time and like we give a countdown we're like we're starting in an or we we our first post is at noon saying like excited everyone's here welcome kind of thing next post is at eight o'clock saying one hour to go time and then literally we take them through um like what an opportunity webinar is in five minute um, increments. So it goes really quick. Um, so there's what, 12 posts and um, the last post is basically how to sign up. And um, we treat them kind of like as a new coach right then. And then the last, um, the next post the next morning is welcoming people to the team and just builds excitement and pops that group back into the feed. Um, and that's gone really well for us. Uh, I can share my format with you guys um, and send that on over if, if anyone wants to look at it. I mean. Yeah, I would love to look at it for sure. Okay. Do something and, different. And it's fun and, and it's, it's laid back. So not every post requires a lot of information or interaction, but a lot of them allow for um, or 
kind of promote that kind of feel like you know chatting back with questions and whatnot um we share during that time period um different coaches um what the they're usually the super saturday videos like the um the success stories of coaches um we've shared nicole jones story hers is very relatable um we shared um crystal oh her last name's escaping me she just got married last year or something was bland I think or brand or um hers is really good it's a single mom with two kids kind of making it on her own out of a bad situation um Nicole Jones is um in a nutshell using the end of her credit card limit to order a challenge pack and um transforming her whole family's life and then um we also use um Becky, um, Christina, well, we talk about Christina's story and we use Bre Becky's video. Um, so those three videos are often in our blitz and they're just fun to share because they're totally different backgrounds of people. Um, and what else in there? Then we poke fun at ourselves. Like, you know, you're a beach body coach or you're ready to be a beach body coach. And then like, like it's 10 lists of things that, you know, are our flaws, you know, like, um, there are silly things like, you know, um, you know, tripping over your feet while you're at home and you don't have to worry about being in a gym or um, you forgot to have breakfast again or, you know, like it's just a, a fun little list and, you know, keeping things light in there too. Um, we also do sneak peeks as a team and we found that keeping them in a three-day format was best. We did a sneak peek um, before in a seven-day format. It just seemed too drawn out. Um, so we usually go in like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday kind of thing. Um, and that's really um, treating them almost as like a getting started right call. So uh, we talk about what a coach is, how we use social media, how we earn, and then how to sign up. And it's just that straightforward. Um, and since we do it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we don't have to worry about losing people over the weekend. So we have Thursday and Friday to kind of touch base and wrap things up with them and move them along. And, you know, again, where are these people coming from? They're coming from our Shakeology groups. They're coming from our free groups. They're coming from our challenge groups kind of thing. Um, and then the older types of recruiting styles where the biz, business opportunity webinars stuff and whatnot. Um, so once we have the people on the team, we, we were finding that a lot of uh, the duplication was getting lost going down in the team to get coaches started right. So I don't know if you guys do this yet, but I highly recommend it. Um, it's on our big, um, sorry, it's on our big team page cover photo. And literally um, it says click here for them to get started. Uh, let me pull up what that is. I can quickly, quick. Ooh, screen share what is on ours because it's been super helpful um, <laughs> I was just making sure the comments that you guys may or may not be able to see are okay <laughs> um, can I just screen share here let's see you should be able to just hit screen share yeah let me know if you can oh there we go you got it yep. so this is our cover photo right here um and we just say you know click here so they the people do and they can see what is offered um to get people started right we make sure that they know where our team page is um our new coach checklist uh that's a little bit different than let me, will it still allow me to pull that up? Okay, so this is our new coach checklist um, and it helps people on where they should be beginning. Um, this is and awesome. Like this is, yeah. Maybe. It's really helpful because then we don't have to worry that people are getting like a, um, a mixed message. So even like this page right here is huge for people you know, to just be like, okay, I just need to do those four things and I'm good to go. And those are really important steps and it gets them into their online office and, you know, 
digging around in the tabs and whatnot. Um, this was our book that we were suggesting, but I also offer um, different alternatives. That's not for everybody. Um, another good book for getting started is uh, Get Over Your Damn Self. I don't, and again, those are books that you're gonna take what you can from them and build your own ideas. Um, because they're, in my opinion, a little bit more on the salesy side than what we as Beachbody coaches are. They lead with the uh, um, opportunity, and I know that works well for some people, but in my experience, um, the best coaches are the coaches that are believers in Beachbody um, first and foremost, meaning they've done a Shakeology challenge, they've done a fitness challenge, they are working on a transformation. Um, they're not um, usually leading with the business, but to each their own. That's just how our team does it. Um, and new coach training is right there, a quick link for them. Um, and then just a little note to them from our team. Um, what else is on there? We have our team Google Drive. We have a reminder with our Zoom link of when we have our team calls, our team's YouTube channel, and then, um, just different forms that are gonna make, or, or links that are gonna make their coaching easier for them. Cause you know, we tried to think of what our coaches were asking the same questions over and over again. And like, I still have coaches that have been coaching for one or two years. And you know, these are people that hit success club and stuff. Um, and they're not using the coach mobile app, you know, or they're not using simple coach links. Like they're sending them people to their website and like having to the, you know chase down orders and I'm just like guys make it simple on yourself so we we do direct links for them and how to get them um, we have a 30-day challenge group guide which everybody tweaks and makes their own um, Carrie can you send this to me like, sure. yeah be helpful and I I can just, I'll just add you to the page and you can take whatever you want <laughs> Thanks. That'll work, right? So, like, I know that, obviously, like, I, not that I run the team alone, I have a success partner, but Carrie and Meg, who I said had, had surgery, they do, like, everything together, so if you feel like, I'll let Carrie talk a little bit about that, but that's definitely an option for you if you feel like that's the direction you want to go. Yeah, and, and I think, um, so... When we first started coaching together, um, it was after our first summit together, um, and we were literally outside waiting for our T25 workout to begin, and um, I was like, so, you know, do we do this? Do we leap? Do we jump? And um, we hadn't heard of anybody, like, that was not related in teams really joining together to forces. Like, we had heard of, like, you know, success partners, you know, the coach and their sponsor and things like that. But Megan and I don't influence each other as far as the business goes in any way whatsoever. I'm on one leg of Lindsay Caterino and Lin and Megan's on the other, on her inside leg of her second business center. So we don't help each other in any way like that, but we help each other by dividing the workload, working way smarter and a lot less harder um, to accomplish, you know, great things that our team can benefit from and I really think this is one of the best things that we've come up with in our years together is just making sure our coaches have everything at their fingertips because when Megan and I started um, let me see how do I get out of this screen share now um, does anyone know is it on here somewhere oh man I'm stuck in screen share now. What I was saying is what Megan and I started, um, we failed forward a lot and we had an eight hour slideshow that we had to watch um, in order to um, get ready to be a coach essentially. And I mean, it was painful. It, there we go. And we're back. Um, and we wanted to not make that like a process for our new coaches. So what we tried to do is put everything in our cover photo that we thought would benefit people the most and quick and easy access. And it's always right there, um, at their fingertips to either tag a new coach or just share, um, really quickly, um, with their team or, 
Um, and even Nax is a great tool for people to send people with the same questions, like the questions that are posting on the team page, like um, that are repetitive. It gets them a place to send them, you know, to help, you know, as a tribe working together and whatnot. So um, let's see, just going to quickly look over. Um, and then I'm, I'm sure you guys have like a get started right call format. Um, we do um, just sim six separate areas when we talk to our new coaches. We do the new coach checklist um, and we talk about basics in social media. Uh, that's the first topic. The second topic is um, PV and SC, so Personal Volume and Success Club, because I know that was a really confusing thing when I started. All the jargon coming at me at once, I was like, whoa, you know, like, I know nothing about sales. We need to time out and back up. So we take a little time to talk about that. That's our second one. We talk about inviting and what that looks like and, you know, the forming process and how um, scripts, I don't know if you guys use scripts, but the sooner you can get away from scripts, the better. Um, once you can find your real voice and your own voice, um, you're going to find this so much easier and less feeling icky. Uh, I'm going to be very honest. When I started, I didn't know what I was doing. So I was using the online office and the, you know, the five step invite process and all that kind of stuff. But I was saying them in front of a mirror so I could see what felt natural and what didn't. Um, and I think great now that we have the voice option for Facebook messages because, you know, hearing your voice versus what they're going to read in black and white um, is a big difference for people. So we take a little time to talk about it, inviting. That's our third one. Um, fourth, we really stress that um, emphasis that Emerald is a decision. So hopefully you've all here decided to go Emerald and have um, because that's when you get to open that whole other side of the compensation plan, which is the most incredible. Um, and we take time to talk about why, why Emerald is a decision and it's not really a goal that you set for 30 days or anything like that. It's, you know, you have the two people that you care about and you just go Emerald and, and we just keep it that really that simple. Our fifth one is how we run challenge groups and, um, uh, we have like the format that I use in the classroom uh, where I would model something for my students and then we'd work on a problem together and then I would watch them work. So the I do, we do, you do. So basically, um, someone, a new coach is in your challenge group as a challenger. Um, then the next challenge group that you run together, they help you lead, you co-lead with them. And then the next one, they add you to their group. And so you can watch and add your thoughts and give advice and um, it, and it's really just a safe way and a confidence building way for coaches to start. And then the, the last part in our getting started right is just the compensation plan and team cycle bonus. And we try to make that as simple as possible. Um, and in that part, we emphasize, yes, Emerald is a decision. Diamond is your first goal and here's why. But once you reach Diamond, you continue to do the things that you got to Diamond so that you can get to two star because that's really where the magic starts to happen when you can recreate yourself in your lowest volume spot. So if you're going to be a business builder, you know, put on that hat to get to two star and, and don't take it off. You know, just put those blinders on and continue doing those vitals that your team does. And I'm sure you guys will get there because it's just a matter of consistency and building that momentum. Um, and then let's see. I think that is the, the last thing that I had for you as far as, you know, how we select our tribe and how we get them into our community. Um, uh, but there is one last thing that we, we tried and I don't know how successful it was. It felt great because the community came together and our tribe benefited from it. But what we did was, um, we, we called it, what did we call it? Was it a backstage pass or something? Um, no, I think that was another name for a sneak peek, but this is where Megan comes in. We remind each other <laughs> of what we did, but we basically essentially basically essentially opened our team page um up for a week and people were worried they were like well what if things come up that aren't positive and i'm like and that's where our team shines the most because other people will sh chime in and lift people up and have solutions and all that kind of stuff so um it was another way that we 
we got people to um, really see the community. And I know that I signed three coaches out of doing that for a week, which I'm not a huge recruiter every month. I'll be very honest about that. Um, I probably average, you know, two, three coaches a month. If I have like more than five, it's like, a crazy month of coaches. It's just consistency of always doing that. Um, that is added up, but um, it's another way that you guys can give give people a sense of what you're all about. And I think I think them being able to see the inside um, really takes away the scare of oh, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a fitness competitor. I'm not a group fitness instructor. I'm not you know, a doctor or whatnot. So um, them just seeing how many real people are there, I think was really beneficial. But So did you remove them if they didn't sign up? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, so sorry. Um, what we did is we all had the same Google link that we shared with people, um, like a Google Drive link. And in order to be added into the group, they had to have their name on there. Mm. So um, once we had that, then we could take them out, all of them out at the end of that week. Okay. Yeah. And then the coaches just added whoever became coaches back in. That's cool. Yeah. And I have a totally unrelated question. Sure. Who came in first in the Beachbody Classic that you came in second? <laughs> um, oh, I can't remember her name, but I can definitely pull up a picture of her. Um, <laughs> that was such a great experience. I, like I said, fail forward almost in everything. And, um, and I really did. It was crazy. And everyone was so supportive. And it just, it, it came from a girl that wouldn't wear shorts to work out to wearing a bikini and heels at the MGM. And I'm just like, still mind blown. Like, yeah, like that, that seems like a logical progression in a year for everyone. Right. But um, yeah, it was incredible. And I can't think of her name. I'm sorry. I can bring him in on pregnancy brain. He's taking everything from me. <laughs> You, you are due like tomorrow, right? Like I'm like really. No. It's like two weeks. It will. Yeah. Two weeks. So I'm going to try to power walk him out. Okay. <laughs> sooner. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, does anyone, I assume, are you going to open up to questions? Yeah, sure. I saw the, about the cover photo. I, I'll definitely do that. Yeah, um, yeah. I can grab that. Yeah. Does anyone have questions? I know that. Chrissy had asked a question that I gave to you beforehand, Carrie, about mm -hmm. like what qualities you look for in people, like specifically. Um. Um, so like, I guess because of how I grew up, I grew up in an alcoholic home where it was, um, you know, do as I say, not as I do. My dad's an alcoholic, my brother's an alcoholic, both recovering. Great news, right? So that's good. But in that environment, I learned that, um, I always needed to have another plan in place to get to my goals, whether it was um, through swimming or academics or, you know, even getting to the college that I wanted to go to, I knew it had to be a full ride. Um, Cause like I said, my parents were, my mom was a teacher, my dad was a firefighter and I was looking at um, division one schools across country. So I knew that like, I always had to have things lined up in order to get there and plan A hardly ever works. So I look for people that um, don't have excuses really um, as far as getting things done. Like um, if you're doing a Shakeology challenge with me for five days, I, I, I'm expecting you to not eat a sheet of cake on day three. You know, like just being real. Like that's kind of a big mess up, you know, like there was a point in that, you know, fork to cake that you could have messaged me and we could have talked through this and what's really bothering you, you know, like, so I'm looking for people that are like go-getters and that, um, are truthful. Like I can honestly say here that you will meet a more honest person than me. I don't lie. I just don't do it. Um, I won't get caught in a lie. So, um, I look for honest people like, you know, that, are okay with being vulnerable and you get to know them behind the scenes and that kind of stuff. Um, and then, um, I'm, I'm looking for people that are ready to change, you know, like maybe they're not where they want to be, or maybe, um, you know, things aren't perfect in their life right now. Maybe the timing is even wrong, but they, they want to change. And so, um, you know, I don't discredit or discount anybody, 
even somebody that's a discount coach. Like I don't label them as a discount coach because I don't want to, them to see themselves at that. I celebrate, yeah, you're saving $15 a month, but you know, do you have anyone in your life that would benefit from what we're doing? And um, I'm always trying to plant that seed of moving forward and paying it forward kind of stuff. Cool. Yep. Question. When you teamed up, was it totally organic? Um, yeah, so, um, so Megan would say that when she started coaching, she wanted to be like me because I was just a little further into the process than her. Um, so Megan joined in January of 2013 and I had joined that summer previously. And so Megan saw me going diamond in January um, but mind you, it took me months to get to Emerald because I didn't know the importance of it. And so I tried to clear that up with my coaches. Um, once my coach was like, hey, you should probably go Emerald so you can put some of that volume below you. I was like, hmm, okay. <laughs> and I signed up my husband and one of my longtime good friends, which if I had a do-over, she knows it, it would be my mother or sister. Like I would <laughs> have done that. Like, like you sign those two spots of people you really, 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 really love. Um, especially if you're growing a business. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, so it, Megan and I just started chatting and she wanted to get to Diamond as fast as she could. And um, I think Diamond was probably the last rank that I was ahead of her on <laughs> because by the end of that first year together of working together, I was five star and she was six star. So we were building kind of at the same rate. Um, and um, we had a lot of the same values. Um, and she said to me, her biggest concern was, uh, what if we don't agree on something? And I said, that's okay. We're both adults and we'll have adult conversation about it. And I can honestly say that there's only been one time and I was probably just emotional, <laughs> um, that we really just didn't see eye to eye. And, um, I had said to her, I'm like, I don't know if there's a better way to introduce people to the team because as we grew, like getting to 250 coaches in your downline takes a while. Getting to 500 takes a little less time. And then getting above that, it just starts to increase. Um, so we were starting to add coaches as a team pretty quickly. And we didn't have a lot of diamonds and above leaving the nest yet. Um, and I was really emotional because I was missing people being added to the team without saying, hey, good job, welcome to the team. And I was seeing posts of new coaches being announced that only had like one or two likes on them or, you know, one comment on them. And I just like, you know, that's not what our team's all about. And like, I was emotional about it. And she was like, you're overthinking this. And, but like, yeah, I would have to say it was totally organic. Um, you know, going into that first summit together, like you, we knew we would be friends, you know, even though we hadn't met yet, we'd been together for six months on our team page. Um, but Megan wasn't my first success partner. I had two before her, one that my sponsor assigned that didn't really work out. Um, and then the second one is still a coach and does well, but um, we weren't really moving at the same pace. Um, and not that that's incredibly important, but we weren't, um, we didn't have that same fire in the belly. Like I had a big fire in my belly. Um, I didn't want to go back to teaching and um, that was fueling me. Um, and so Megan was my third success club, a success partner, success club partner too. Yeah. Um, but I, I suggest dating around um, and seeing like who um, in your groups or in your team groups that you kind of jive with. Um, Another thing that you could do as a team is um, like a success club or a success partner wanted kind of post and everyone can just add their like stats and backgrounds so people can learn a little bit about you. Um, I don't really obviously share openly like that I come from an alcoholic home on social media because it's just something that I haven't had the the need to do yet. I mean, I obviously want to help a community like that, but um, it's something I can add privately. Um, and I think it says something about me that's relatable for some people. Um, and you can, you can be a little bit more open within your own team page and stuff like that about things like that. Um, 
So that's kind of a, a good strategy. But any other questions? I'm a little over time, I'm sorry. No, you're not over time. You should tell them what you and Meg did last year when she was a top 10 coach so you guys can understand the strength of this relationship. Very cool, I remember seeing the pictures. Oh, when she sent me something in the mail? No, when you guys went on the top 10 trip. Yeah, so um, so Megan sent my husband um, a message asking for permission to take me on her top 10 trip to Bora Bora, and I had no idea about it. And um, in the mail, she sent me um, a lay and a, a question that says, will you be my date to Bora Bora? And um, I completely lost it. My husband's videotaping it for her because he knew what was in the mail. And um, it was amazing. Like we went on this trip together. It was nine other couples, <laughs> and Megan and I, and it was fun. And um, like we had a blast and it's definitely one of my favorite memories that I'll ever have um, as far as traveling goes for sure. And um, yeah, it, it just, it, it just solidified, I guess, our friendship. And it felt like I was on a trip with my sister, you know, um, and it was amazing. And um, I mean, it gave me a sneak peek into the company and just grew my, my love for the people that are leading us um exponentially to talk um you know one-on-one -on -one with jeff hill or michael neiman or um just being with the the corp john he's he's amazing just being with those corporate people and really hearing their hearts and listening to their spouses and knowing that it's so genuine and you know you guys, if you listen to Jeff Hill at all, you know he tears up, and he'll probably tear up at Summit this year, too, in front of everyone. He's just a genuine guy, and I, it just instilled my belief in Beachbody so much more. Like, we're not like a front-loaded MLM where it's going to be all this glitz and glam right from the start. You're not going to be making bank because it's it's a real lifelong, like you can plan 10, 15, 20 years from now thing that's going to be around. And, um, if you're consistent, I mean, there's no way in telling from right now where you'll be a year from now. It just takes one crazy nut. Like there are other jillions that you can sign to be on your team in your lowest volume spot and just completely transform your life. So, um, yeah, it was an, an incredible trip. We did so much and the company, you know, does not skimp on anything of showering their, um, you know, highest performing coaches. And um, it was just amazing. Um, do we ever meet in person to go over things and hang out? Uh, no, she is in North Carolina. Um, when we first started coaching, she was in Washington state. So we were on different time zones. Um, I sacrificed a lot of sleep, <laughs> um, because we would work at night and, um, and you know, nine o'clock isn't so late for her, but midnight starts to get late for me. And, um, we were just, we just made it work. Um, but we, this year we're not seeing each other as much because I'm pregnant, um, and not go, we're not going on the trip, but we usually see each other like every couple months with trips and whatnot. Um, and then every week on Zoom. And I mean, we chat, I don't even know how many times a day, um, but we, our families haven't met yet, which is so crazy. <laughs> I don't even understand how that's even possible, but I feel like I know them. Um, and anything else i think we're good does anyone have anything you can unmute yourself too like don't be shy i was really intimidated by carrie at first too just because she's like such a big deal <laughs> but she's really nice i promise and i i literally she'll she can confirm this i message her every day to t ask her something about pregnancy or tell her something yeah. because she i was in like a secret rainbow babies group and i was about to post in it and i noticed she was in it and i hadn't gone like public with my pregnancy and i messaged her i'm like carrie 
you're in this group I'm about to post. If I post, you have to keep your mouth shut. So she was like one of the first people to find out. And she's been very patient with all my yeah. wacky questions. <laughs> so. And I just need to say, I hope Candy posts a lot of smiley pictures because your smile is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I smile all the time. <laughs> Good. Good. So I use emojis all the time because, you know, why not? <laughs> I feel like the selfies get us into the feeds anyway. So make sure you guys are doing at least a selfie every other day, at least. <laughs> yeah. I'll try. Anything else, guys? I'll get the stuff from Carrie and I'll share it with everyone so you can recreate for your teams. And I'll definitely be using some of it for our team for sure. Awesome. All right. Everyone good? It's good. Okay. Well, I appreciate everyone coming. I know that we had some low turnout weeks, so I'm psyched that everyone is here and we can continue these. Um, makes me really happy. And Carrie, send our love to Meg. I hope she Love starts you. feeling better. Like, yeah, she is. She's a trooper, and she already messaged me. She's like, "This is going to be the easiest recovery ever." <laughs> I'm like, "You're crazy," but okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Carrie. Bye-bye.